It was the last great game in one of the last original pro football palaces. On a warm Christmas Eve, 61,000 fanatics postponed holiday travel to see their real family, who played football in a decaying shrine to fan loyalty in Baltimore, Maryland. And if you ask one who was there in 1977, they might swear they saw the last autumn sun shine across Memorial Stadium. And they'll remember this game. 76 minutes, 68 points, nine lead changes. And they'll remember the last great battle before everything changed. Preserved forever as a loving gift from the ghosts of Baltimore past. It was a game that uh, I think from a uh, from a fan standpoint provided everything the football is. It's fantastic being part of something that's going to go down in history. That game was a great game, one of the all-time great games in the history of the NFL, and I think it's forgotten. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Baltimore Cold Football. This is Chuck Thompson along with Vince Bagley at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and this is the Sunday. This is the day that will make or break the Baltimore Colts' year. The winners of the AFC East against the wild card entry, the Oakland Raiders, the defending Super Bowl champions in the first round of the AFC playoffs, the Colts and the Oakland Raiders. The team had grown up. A lot of the guys that were there for the 77 season really started playing football as young men together. In 1975, the Colts had emerged from the AFC East cellar into one of the league's most talented teams. Led by quarterback Burt Jones, the offense was one of the game's most powerful, while the defense featured a young and formidable pass rush. There was a, a string there from, from 75 through the, uh, t towards the end of 77. We were 29 and four, and uh, it, it, it was a ball club that I, I think above everything else played together. Though Baltimore captured three consecutive division titles, by 1977, both the Colts and their fans were eager for the team to ascend to a world championship. We wanted to say, you know, not only to ourselves, our fans, we can go further. In fact, 77, to me, I felt was the best opportunity this football team was going to have to make it to the Super Bowl. Championship games were one thing the Oakland Raiders were familiar with after topping Minnesota in Super Bowl XI the previous year. For Oakland, winning was second nature. And our goal was not to win our division. Our goal was not to make it to the playoffs. Our goal was to go to the Super Bowl and win it. I think that mentality comes from Al Davis. I really believe that Al Davis is the architect of that never say die and never give up. The Raiders were best known for a swashbuckling persona that made them the renegades of the NFL. With a roster of outcasts turned enforcers, head coach John Madden had melded football's halfway house into a palatial estate. I've always thought it was like a good horse. If you're gonna get a good horse to run, you gotta give him his head, give him the reins, let him run. And I think that's the way John approached us. Let them go, give them their head, let them be what they wanna be on the field, let them be what they wanna be off the field. We were very appreciative of that. He made it fun for us. And, and how do you repay him? Well, the way you repay him is to go win on Sunday. Wanting to prove themselves once and for all, Baltimore was eager to face the defending champs. I grew up with the Raiders. I mean, I was playing with my friends. I still lived in Oakland. Um, it was the first time that we had played them since I was in Baltimore where we really had a chance to match up with them. I thought we had every opportunity uh, in the world to beat them. I actually thought we had a better team. The stadium was absolutely electric, and for us in the locker room, we really felt we could beat these guys. Hubert Ginn and Carl Garrett down on the goal line. Tony Linhardt, a fellow who was an Olympic skier from Austria, will kick off for the Baltimore Colts. Linhardt hits it as high. It is deep. Garrett waiting at the Oakland one. Garrett straight ahead, 10, 20, 25 up the middle, 30, 35 up to the 40, and over the 40 
the 41-yard line before Garrett is finally pulled down. Again, the Oakland Raiders, the very first play of the ball game, demonstrate the fact that they are a bit more proficient returning the kick. It'll be Oakland's ball, first down at their own 41-yard line. Stabler will be the quarterback, and his running backs in there will be Davis, number 28, and alongside of Davis will be number 30, that's Mark Van Egan. The turn, the gift goes to Davis, left side, and he is up to the 45 and pulled down from behind by Mike Barnes. Again, that is something we expect to see Oakland do frequently today. They seem to prefer running the ball then to their left. Stabler gets to Van Egan, right side of Cuddy at the head for three. The lead back, Roosevelt leads. The trailing back is Lydell Mitchell. In motion, Glenn Dowdy from wide to the right toward his own backfield. Pitch back to Lydell Mitchell. Swing to the right side into Oakland territory and taken down around the Oakland 48-yard line by Monty Johnson and also by John Matusak, who rolled out to help on the tackle. The ball is marked at the Oakland Raiders. 48-yard line, second down, seven, Baltimore. Again, an eye formation. Leaps the lead back. The give to Lydell down the middle, and he stutters down to maybe the 46-yard line, looking for a little bit of a hole. Down five at the Raider, 46. Freddie Scott wide left, Dowdy wide right, standard throws that backfield. Take away by Jones, he wants to throw, rolls right, looks, fires the pass. It is incomplete, ascending for Glenn Dowdy at the Raider, 35-yard line. And the Colts come up fourth and five at the Raiders, 46-yard line. And David Lee is on field to do the putting. And Oakland with a 10-man rush. Here comes the pressure. David Lee got it away, angling to the far sideline. Colsey watches it bounce. It's going out of bounds inside the 15, and there is a timeout. We felt like we would be able to set up good second down situations with good running plays. Um, but to my surprise and to our surprise, we weren't as effective running the football as what we had hoped to be. Baltimore's inability to run the football sidetracked their attack. But the Raiders fared no better against the Colts' front four. Midway through the first quarter, a game that many thought would be a shootout was a defensive battle, with the offenses doing anything they could to show their resiliency. I know a lot of people used to say we run to the left because Kenny Stabler was left-handed. It had nothing to do with that. It was because we had Art Shell and Gene Upshaw over there. That's why we ran to the left. And I remember I learned this from Vince Lombardi, that if you're fundamentally sound and you work in your fundamentals and, and you do what you do best and practice it more than they practice against it, you'll have success even if they know it's coming. It was a, what we call 
uh, back then a 15L. Uh, the read was really off of my block. Whatever way I ran my guy, Clarence McConnell off of that. So we uh, ran that play, and I remember him breaking through the line of scrimmage. And, um, you know, he, he broke a few tackles getting into the end zone. As a matter of fact, there was a face mask there that they probably should have called, but they didn't call it. But um, he was determined to get into the end zone. And, of course, I was very excited about it, too. Well, Errol Mann, he's been around for a few years. Vince will try the point after touchdown. We're waiting for the snap. There it is, the spot, the kick in the air. And a kick is good. So with about 30 seconds showing on the stadium clock, the Oakland Raiders now are leading the Baltimore Colts by a count of 7 to nothing. The guy waiting for the OK from the official. Here's a booming kickoff into the end zone, and Marshall Johnson will cover it in the end zone and not return it. And the Colts will have the touch back and go to work first down at their own 20-yard line. Right over to Roosevelt leads the standard throws that backfield. From the Baltimore 20, a play-action fake. Back to throw with Jones. Fires down the throat. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Hall. Nineteen seconds in this first quarter. Dowdy wide right, Scott wide left, standard throw set backfield. Jones is back to throw. He rolls right pressure coming. Oh, Incomplete and again, Dave Rowe is jumping up and down. The middle man of the front three got a hand of the football and did not hold on to it. And Bird is finding it a little bit difficult to hook up with his receivers in the early going. Bird is 0 for 5. That's having trouble hooking up. It was probably the biggest game that Bird's ever been in. And uh, he just was a little hyper. I just think he was just, uh, he may have been a little nicked up and a little hyper. And I think we all were. After deflecting Jones, Oakland set about deflating him. Early in the second quarter, the Raiders gained possession near midfield with a chance to extend their seven-point lead and take control of the game. of that experience and caliber in those games, we'd always try and give them different looks. So what I did was cheat out a little bit, and when the ball snapped, I kind of flew to the sideline and just kind of made him think that that gap there in the flat would be open. And as soon as I saw him set, 
I just broke back, made a great jump on the ball. I stepped in front of Van Egan, and I took it 61 yards for a touchdown. He was not a great cover guy, but he was a smart guy. Not tremendous speed, not big, not strong, not fast, but smart. And they sat in zones back there in disguised zones, and he sat back there in one of those zones, and I didn't see him. Just remember what a lift it was for the team. Uh, it was a 65-yard score, and I think what it, what it showed the rest of the team is that everybody came to play, special teams, defense, offense. With Laird's interception providing a sudden surge of adrenaline, the next six minutes turned into a defensive war of attrition. For the Raiders, every yard, Every completion had become a struggle against the rough and tumble Colts defense. They didn't give you very much. It was always very tough. Stan White was probably one of the smartest linebackers to ever play. And I can still see number 53 standing out there trying to get that edge. And you had Cook, you had Ehrman, you had uh, Dutton. You had all of those guys that you knew very well. In the first half, uh, we never had field position. We're always deep inside of our 20, and to go 80 yards against the Raiders is a, is a tough assignment. We weren't doing much. The Raiders really weren't doing much. The defenses were kind of dominating, and, uh, and, and, and it usually has the signs of a pretty good football game. Surprisingly, it was the Colts' defense and not the swaggering attack of the Silver and Black that had changed the tempo of the game. Jones's completion to Freddie Scott was the spark that the Colts' offense needed. Baltimore then began to successfully pound the ball with Lydell Mitchell. Later in the series on a key third down, Jones shrugged off his slow start and seemingly willed his way to a first down. Bert, to me, was such a competitor, and uh, that's what uh, I loved about playing on the same team as Bert. I mean, he was a fierce competitor, and uh, with the strongest arm I, that I've ever seen. Very brash, confident. Uh, Bert remind me so much of John Elway. Same type of body and everything, built basically the same way. I always said if you took the numbers off the back, you might not be able to tell the two apart. And will surely throw here as McCauley is in the game to run out of the backfield. They'll rush four men of us uh, rather right Pressure coming in the pocket. He throws it to Don McCauley to the Raider 25. To about the Raider 26 to 21 yard line goes McCauley. First down Baltimore near the Raider 21. Willie Brown took him out of bounds. I watched McCauley all the way on that play. And he blocked and then he hung in there for a minute. And then a little bit of a head fake toward the middle. And he broke outside and he had the linebacker chasing him. And there wasn't any way he was going to get him. Gets the rope about off the right side, makes the turn, gets hit back forward for another yard or two down around the open 17 yard line. Stadium now beginning to get a little bit more excited as they anticipate the Baltimore Cold Drive that started on their own 20. They drop the uh, fourth linebacker ball and they add the fourth defensive lineman to May. On a third down, eight Baltimore at the Raider 19. Takeaway by 
Jones, a straight drop, wants to throw. Throws, and it's going to be intercepted and then dropped. Incomplete. Forward pass, number 32, Jack Tatum. Looked like he had it, never controlled it, dropped the football at the five-yard line. So the Colts are still alive with a fourth down at eight at the Raider, 19. Bill Troop will be the holder. Lynn Hart, the kicker, waiting for the snap. Spot, kick, on the way. With 1.53 left in the half, Stabler led the Raiders downfield with a flurry of passes, taking advantage of the soft underbelly of the Colts' defense. Mark Van Egan's 16-yard catch and run put Oakland in position to tie the game. Uh, I wasn't big at, you know, speeches. Uh, we would we would just make adjustments. Well, I think the game was shaping up the way we kind of expected it. We were kind of a, a, a no-mistake team, you know, and, and bend, 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 but don't break and then wait for opportunity. We left knowing that we had a lot of time to play. We could still score. We had Stable back there that could find people and get things done. There's Art Shell, there's Gene Upshaw, there's Snake, there's Branch, there's Blitnikoff, there's all these great players. You know what? We're hanging in there. We're playing well. We got to do a few things better. We got to stop some of the big plays. And I kind of think the off the defense kind of looked over and said, "Offense, you got to get off your duff and start making some first downs." First halves didn't matter. Second half didn't matter until we got to the end of the game and what was on the scoreboard. So if we're trailing the halftime, it was, it was no big deal. It was, just had to give us time to work it out. I think the game plan was still going to be Branch Blitnikoff in the running game. We had a couple little plays in there for down inside the 20 that when we, we got in there, we thought I could be effective. But out in the, I don't really think I was a big part of the game because of the fact that they're going to play zones and they weren't going to, uh, the, the way they played it wasn't good. I don't think the Raiders looked at me as a big part of that game. Second half, just about ready to get underway between the Baltimore Colts and the Oakland Raiders. And at the end of the first half, Baltimore leading by a count of 10 to 7. Sellout crowd in Baltimore. Absolutely perfect weather conditions. And now the kickoff. Oakland kicking off to Baltimore. Waiting down on the goal line, Marshall Johnson. Well, the kickoff is kind of missed. Blackwood takes it to the Baltimore 20, 25, 30. And it's hit and uh, held at about the 33-yard line. The Colts have reasonably good field position at their own 33. The tackle set it goes to Rod Martin. Well, the Colts have the football. First and 10 at their own 33-yard line. Leaks and Lydell Mitchell, the running backs behind Jones against the Lydell. He starts to the right side, makes a turn, and is hit crossing the 35-yard line and held at about the 37 by Floyd Rice, the linebacker on that side. And Scott wide to the right side, down to the left side. The gift goes to Lydell. Hit and taken by linebacker number 52, and that is Floyd Rice again. Popped through in the backfield and stopped Lydell before he got back to the line of scrimmage. just a little bit too much. The Colts now will come up with a fourth down and six at their own 37. Baltimore's David Lee will be on field to punt it as they have done without exception today. The Raiders will rush 10 men. Here comes the punt. David Lee hits another high hanging spiral deep downfield. Colsey at the Oakland 31. Hit down he goes. Sanders Shiver. Oh. Sanders Shiver took him with the football and nailed him at about the 30 yard line. That's as good a play as Baltimore's made, a special team has made all year. And that was individual effort by Shivers, who broke through people and hit the ball carrier, a receiver, Goldie, just as he caught the ball. Goletnikoff and Branch are wide to the right side of the set. Van Egan and Davis are running back. Van Egan off the left side, hit in the middle of the hole, and taken down after a yard, maybe two. And it looked like it was Ed Simonini on top of the pile for second and eight. At the Raider 
32-yard line. Baltimore 10, the Raiders 7. Just starting the second half of play. Baylor wants to throw. Set. Fire. Going for throw. Here is Branch, and it is going to be taken by Branch at the 30. He gets up and runs again and is out of bounds. They went for the bomb for the first time today and hooked it up with Cliff Branch. It is Raiders ball. First down at the Baltimore 28. Take away the gift of Van Egan off the left side. A big hole. He's down at the Baltimore 20 to the 15. Down to the Baltimore 10 goes Van Egan. Run by the former Red Raider in Blackwood comes up limping and is coming to the sideline. They're spotting it at about the 12 yard line. I think we could probably equate his loss with Roger Carr. Uh, Lyle was, was, was a smart defensive back who knew the defenses extremely well and was, was, was a good, good tackler in addition. So we had to replace him with, with uh, a kid by the name of Baylor, who, you know, who hadn't played that much. time in the world to throw the ball. Stabler was never pressured. Actually threw it off the wrong foot, Chuck, I think, as he stepped up and let it go. And it's like a dart. And uh, Casper's first catch of the day results in the go-ahead touchdown for Oakland. Uh, I had to step up in the pocket if memory serves. Somebody hammering on my legs or something, and Dave cuts across. It's just a little flick in there for a touchdown. Dave Casper on the receiving end. Waiting for the point after touchdown by Errol Mann. Snap, there's the spot kick is in the air, looks okay, there are no penalty flags down, and there is a break in the action with the score, the Oakland Raiders 14, the Baltimore Colts 10. It seems like every time uh, uh, the Raiders would started to muscle their way into, into a dominance, we'd get, we'd get a big play. And uh, Marshall Johnson's play was as big as it gets for us. Well, Ray Guy will kick off the uh, Oakland Raiders and I'll lead 14 to 10. Once Baltimore provided Johnson a perfectly formed wedge to follow, number 85, Jimmy Kennedy, paved the way further by taking out not only Pete Banizak, but Rob McClanahan as well. We knew he had speed, but we didn't know he had this kind of speed. Uh, I, I think there was almost divine intervention for him to make that play the way that he did, you know. What I remember about that play is Madden. I mean, that was, to him, it was a nightmare, just being on the sideline and, and just to see his reaction uh, of how can you allow that to happen after we have so much momentum. Nobody got really excited like this is the end of the game or nothing like that. It's just something that happened and we got to go back out and score and get the lead back. They're on their feet. Lenhardt hits the football. Line drive. Carl Garrett runs up to it, takes it at the Oakland 10. 15, 20, 25, 30, and down he goes, crossing the 30-yard line. It might have been Wade Griffin again. I'm not at all sure. First down at the Raider 33. Bletnikoff wide right. Branch wide left. Van Egan and Davis. The gift to Davis. Left side. Outside and is going to be run out of bounds around the 35 yard line. It looked like Stan White pursued and chased him out of bounds. Second and eight now. Lenikoff in motion back toward the Oakland Raiders set. The takeaway by Saber. Saber sets up fire sideliner. Intercepted by Bruce Laird. What a play Laird made, Chuck. He came up and bumped the Lenikoff. Clay Lenikoff came rushing up and bumped him. And then he retreated to make the interception. And we were just saying to ourselves, you know what, 
This is our time. I think defensively, I know our feeling was, okay, guys, it's time for you guys to start playing. Let's go, O, start making some plays, and let's get this thing done. First down, Baltimore at the Raiders, 40-yard line. In motion, Dowdy to give to Lydell to the right side of cut. He can't go anywhere, and it's down along the line of scrimmage. And along the Raider 40-yard line, Ted Hendricks is credited with the tackle down at the bottom of the pile, John Matuzak. Jones now wants to go. Second and ten, plenty of time blocked. They fight for possession. Oh, Pratt of Baltimore has got it. And Pratt takes it to about the 41-yard line of Oakland. Willie Hall may have blocked it. And they volleyballed it around. And before it hit the turf, Bob Pratt grabbed it and ran downfield to about the Oakland 42-yard line. What a weird uh, series of plays we have seen. Third down to 12, Baltimore at the Raider 42-yard line. Betty Scott wide left, Dowdy wide right. The offense has Jones on third and 12, has protection, now runs out of it. Jones is running and is going to be hit and taken down by Sistrunk at midfield. Ken Huff is all over Sistrunk saying, wait a minute, you don't have to manhandle a quarterback. Just knock him out of bounds. Well, David Lee will punt again. Oakland rushes 10 men. The lone safety downfield, Neil Colsey. David Lee's punt. He blocked it, blocked. Oakland has blocked it and they're rushing for possession. Has got it, and down the far sideline, linebacker number 56, Jeff Barnes, and he is out of bounds around the 16-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. That wasn't one of my most classiest uh, blocks, you know. And that particular one, I only had one hand out and hit the ball, slapped at it, and it hit my hand and dropped down. And that was a pretty big play in that game because we got the the ball back at that time. Van Egan down the middle, he goes, knocked off the spins around the Baltimore 12-yard line by Stan White. A gain of about four, second and six for the Raiders near the Baltimore Colt 12. Casper tight end left side of the line, they give it to Van Egan off the left side, he makes a turn and is knocked down at about the 10-yard line. John Dutton caved that play in. It's at about the Baltimore 10-yard line now, third down and four for the Raiders. Branch and Blitnikoffer wide to the right side of the set. Take away by Stabler. He wants to throw. He set. Has plenty of time. Let's it go into the end zone. Touchdown, Casper. He's hit as he threw. Incredible how Casper could come open. And, and Stabler had that much time to throw the ball and lob the ball at Casper. The ball had nothing on it, but it got there before anybody in the blue uniform could knock it down. My deal is you go out and you play and you do what they tell you to do, you run back on the sideline and you sit down and get on the oxygen tank for a while. It was a regular defense. They played normal coverages with good players. And you line up and you get in your position, you get your right split, you get your good stance and you do your assignment and you play like hell and you got a chance. Here's the point after touchdown. It looks good from up here. It's good from down there. So there is a timeout now. The score, the Oakland Raiders, 21, and the Baltimore Colts, 17. We knew later in the game that, that we weren't going to be as effective on the ground as what we had hoped. And so the natural thing to do is, is to utilize the run pass or play action. On the first drive of the fourth quarter, Jones and the Colts put their new strategy in motion and began gaining yardage in bunches. beginning to the football game. Matter of fact, he went 0 for 5 before he started to complete passes. And it could be, uh, although it's hard to say, maybe that bad leg of bird is giving him a little difficulty. To take away the fake, rolls back the throw, sets up fire. Here is Lydell Mitchell. He can't hold on to it at midfield. Lydell Mitchell, the intended receiver at about the 50-yard line. 
With the passing game established, the Colts now found the running lanes open for the first time all day. By changing up from Mitchell to McCauley to Lee, the Colts staged an 80-yard drive, moving to the Oakland one-yard line with four chances to retake the lead. kind of a dive right over the middle and I hit him and uh, ended up cracking a vertebrae in my neck and didn't find out about it for about six months. That day I had to take me out of the game because uh, I'd gotten a zinger down my both of my arms. As the Raiders tended to Johnson, Baltimore tended to a fourth and goal situation just three feet from the end zone. There were never a whole lot of conversation about whether or not we should kick a field goal. Uh, we were, you know, you don't get there by kissing your sister. Being assisted off the field, Monty Johnson and John Matt went right out there to a look at his football player. And he seems to be moving, uh, you know, more or less under his own power. Well, here's obviously the biggest play of the year so far. So far. And I have a feeling we'll have a few more in the next ten and a half minutes. The ball is just about one yard away, right in front of the upright. 21 to 17, Oakland. Here we go. Jones has them down and set. Waiting for the snap. And Jones gets the lead. He hurls straight ahead. Touchdown, Baltimore. Ron Lee has scored. Boy, if he did, he made it by an inch. Obviously, they had some reads on us, and they were clogging up, uh, you know, our strong points. And uh, thank God Ron got in. I know it was questionable by everybody whether he was in or not, but, you know, I say he was in, and I'm sure Ron will give the same answer. They called it a touchdown, so we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I've had a few touchdowns called, called that were not touchdowns. <laughs> a big game and uh, I didn't think that there was anything seriously wrong and so as a result when it got time to go back into the game uh, there was just no question I went over and talked to shin bones and said you know what are we gonna call and off I went well with 10 minutes and 28 seconds on the stadium clock in Baltimore in the fourth quarter it's now Baltimore 24 the Oakland Raiders 21 Linhart is up to hit the football he hits it high and fairly deep. Miles Garrett waiting at the Oakland 4. Straight ahead over the 10. Now 15. Now 20. Now 25. Now 30. And Linhart is going to hold him up along the 40. And then he is still fights for yardage. And is finally taken down at about the 47-yard line. Garrett returned all the way to about 
at the Raider 48-yard line. Bryant wide left, wide right is Kletnikov. Davidson to Van Egan. Stabler back to throw. He's set. Pass time. Fires. Sideliner. Here comes Kletnikov without a catch. He's trapped the ball at about the 45-yard line of the Baltimore Bowl. John Madden coming up to help the official uh, with his explanation of it, but that won't work, John. I tell you, there aren't very many times I can see Boletnikov within five yards of the football not making the catch. Stabler back to throw. Fairly deep drop. One pump. Now time. Takes pumps again. Throws. Incomplete. The ball was intended for Cliff Branch. It'll be third down and ten at the Raider 47. Branch wide to this side. Boletnikov wide the other way. Stabler back to throw. He sets up. Has the fire to the back. Coming out of the backfield. He's down to the 40-yard line of Baltimore. Down to the 30. Inside the 30-yard line goes Mark Van Egan, peeled out of the backfield, and got right by a linebacker at about the 45-yard line of Bruce Laird, made the saving tackle inside the Baltimore 30. The Raiders, again, have come right out of that third down and 10 situation to a first down at the Baltimore 29. Baltimore's worried about Branch and Blitnikoff, and the, a couple of times they've gone to the back, and that's down to Van Egan for a big first down. Wide right, Blitnikoff. Back to throw again. He sets up. Has time. Going for throw. Here's Cliff Branch in the end zone. And it is a penalty flag. Branch was right there trying to get the ball and running into him. Number 31, Nelson Muncy. Interference. And it'll be first and goal for the Raiders at the one-yard line. Muncy not looking at the ball as it was coming down. In effect, was safeguarding the receiver. And you can't do that. First and goal for the Raiders. Stabler turns. Gets the man attack right side. And it's a touchdown over. Zach scores on the power thrust over the right side, and the Raiders jump in front again. And we'll watch the point after touchdown by Errol Morrow. Errol Mann, rather, and kick in the air. Looks okay. No penalty flags are down. So there's a break in the action. Let's pause now for this message. That's the best part of the football game. Your adrenaline is flowing, and now you got to make plays. All they on defense got to make plays. Who's going to make the play? So you're going to try to make sure that your team is the one that's making the plays. These guys act like they're home. You know, they just wouldn't go away. And, 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 and I guess right then you say to yourself, man, this is the makings of a great game. Well, we're all ready to go. Guy will kick it off. It took the Oakland Raiders a minute and 16 seconds to get the lead back. Guy gets the go-ahead from the official, and uh, he approaches the ball straight on and really rockets the high end-over-end kick toward Marshall Johnson at the two. He's straight ahead to the 10. 15, now 20, outside, and it's going to be written out of bounds around the 26 or 7 yard line of the uh, Baltimore Colts. It looks like Hubert Ginn may have been there to run him out. And Vanazak kind of shaken up a little bit on that kickoff recovery. Colts ball, first down of the Colts, 27. Ron Lee at light out Mitchell, the running back behind Burt Jones. Play action fake, he wants to throw, has a little time, down the middle. Chester open. He drilled that. He had great concentration as he drilled that one down to Raymond Chester. This is some sensational game. Regardless of which team wins it, the fans have been entertained. and All ready to go. High formation. Lee, the lead back. The second back is wide up. Take away to get to no one. Play action. Play. Jones sets up and dumps it off to Ron Lee at the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 27 or 28 yard line. He is out of bounds. Ron Lee, a little swing pass out of the backfield. Willie Brown drove him out. Yanked it away, gives to Ron Lee, off the left side, ducks around, he has got a chance out of the 20, and on his feet of the 15, inside the 15, he goes out of bounds. Ron Lee has picked up another first down for the Colts on a sweep. I think we were probably, you know, subconscious of Lydell that uh, we probably created some openings uh, for him, and we, but we felt he wasn't going to... Uh, hurt us. The fullback wasn't going to win the game if they if he had the most scoring, excuse me, the most amount of yardage, if you will. He was the fastest of our running backs, um, and he was the biggest of our running backs. So getting him into the one-on-one -on -one position with another football player, uh, we thought the odds were in our favor with Ron. 28 to 24, Oakland leading, Colts are driving. Down and wide, down to the right side, the gift of Ron Lee off the left side. kind of 
of a lead blade that really was designed to go wider. In other words, he was working to the outside, but he saw the pursuit and he saw the feel and he saw everything going that way. And at that point, he abruptly turned and, and even though it was more an up the field cut, it essentially was against the grain of the flow of the defense. Uh, I lost my jock strap. Um, overran the play, and the guy, you know, fullback cuts back on me, and I'm standing there reaching for him, and he goes in and scores. And Lenhardt will try the point after. Snap kick, it's in the air, and the kick is good. So with timeout now, it is Baltimore 31, Oakland 28. It was, it was a big step forward for us, and I know at that time figured that, you know, I think this is it. I think we have it now. Oakland is a team that you want to hold the football on. You don't want to let them have any more opportunities with the ball than what they have to have because they're going to score. After a blizzard of points, the Baltimore defense fell like an avalanche over Stabler and the Raiders. For the first time since the first quarter, Oakland was held without yardage and gave the suddenly red-hot Burt Jones the football in good field position with a chance to widen his three-point lead. We felt great. We said, you know, Burt, couple first downs, this and that, you know, maybe another three points. That's when winners are born. With the lead, Baltimore could either stay with a successful passing game or try and run out the clock on the ground. The Colts went back to the run and had their momentum stolen by John Matuzak and the Oakland defense. Well, you know, what happened? I mean, it was almost in the, they, they started playing not to lose rather than trying to play to win. You know, it was not an independent thought of mine. We felt like we needed to eat up some time and move the ball. Ted Marchabrota called myself and Bert over and um, said, you know, let's uh, this is torsion in the game, you know, let's run the football, let's run the football. We wanted to get again those four yards on first down, and I think this is what we were unable to do. I think we disagreed, but you know, that's the coach and everything, so you have to pretty much do as the coach wishes. You know, he had called a perfect game, you know, so why wouldn't you go along with, uh, you know, you're liable to break when Lydell's liable to go 60 yards on an off-tackle play. It, uh, you know, it does happen. With another shot to put the Raiders away, Baltimore kept the ball on the ground running twice, and then again when Jones was flushed from the pocket. While Stabler had been halted down the stretch, stopping him with the game on the line was a task Baltimore had hoped to avoid. They don't get a first down. Then our side of the football started to get a little bit antsy. I can remember conversations going back and forth with us going on the field to our offensive team, and it wasn't pleasantries. We were telling them to get a gosh darn first down and let's get out of here. Oh, I'm scared to death <laughs> because I, I knew we were going to be in the, in the prevent defense, and I knew I, I knew you know I know basically the kind of coverages our guys uh, are used to playing and, and how they cover, and I knew. Uh, I just knew Snake. The Raiders will go to work. First and 10 at the Raider. 30-yard line. Time. 2 minutes, 55 seconds. Score. Baltimore, 31. Oakland, 28. And the goose bumps are getting a little intense. Oh, brother. When you have the guy that's in the huddle that's calling the play, and you look into his face, you know. You know how he feels. You've been there with him too many times before. You know exactly what he needs, and everyone tries to help get it done. So now you say to yourself, well, I can't let my guy get to it, and everybody else along that line is saying the same thing. If they beat us, it won't be because my guy got there. 70 yards away from the go-ahead. We'll see now in a standard pro set backfield. Stabler turns. He wants to throw it first down. Sets up in the pocket. Fires. It is caught by Clarence Davis, the back. And he is taken down at about the 44-yard line of the Raiders. First down for the Raiders at that spot. Davis is not about to panic. A lot of side runs. Davis and Van Egan are the running back. Stabler wants to throw again. He's back into the pocket. Sets up. Fires. It is going to be incomplete. It was a carom grab by Clarence Davis covering on the play. Ray Oldham. Raiders second down and 10 now at their own 44. We have a pass. And... It was called 91 in. 
and a 91 in, the two outside receivers, the X and the Z, both ran in, in patterns. And then on that, the tight end would run a post, which was kind of a clean out. In other words, he would go deep and clean out the middle, and then the two outside receivers would come to the inside of the middle. That play, if you look statistically, that play was the most successful play the Raiders ever ran. Every time we called that play during the season, we gained over nine yards just for calling it. So Tom Flores, who was an assistant at that time, noticed when we would throw the end that the safety was sneaking up on the end and getting awfully close. So that would tell us if the safety was coming up to take away the end, that we could get by him to the post. So what he said it was on 91 in, take a peek at Ghost to the Post. And Dave Casper's nickname was Ghost. Vanazak replaces Van Egan in the Raider backfield with information from the sideline. So it's Vanazak and Davis. Branch is wide left, Lickasoff wide right. Stabler back to throw. He sets the minor receiver. Takes another look, lobs it upfield. Here is Casper. He's got it at the Baltimore 15-yard line. Nelson Muncy made the tackle. Well, you were asking whether or not he could throw it deep. He hung it up in the air, and Casper ran under it. I don't think I caught a pass on that play all year. They weren't going to let Branch get deep, so they put two guys short and deep on him, and they weren't going to let Fred get open. And I'm supposed to run to the post pattern, but he came from the inside covering me. And so I did some maneuvers to set him up, and I faked it out, and I went underneath him to the post, and I had him going the wrong way, and I was open. But by that time, because I was late, Snake had already thrown the ball, guessing where I was going to go. And when I looked up over my shoulder, I took one look and said the ball's <laughs> the ball wasn't going where I was going. And uh, I did mention at the time I'd played a lot of outfield as a kid, and I used to practice running without, so I just put my head down real quick, looked to a spot, ran to it, and then quickly looked back up. And then when I looked up, the ball, thank God, was coming right down into my hands. If I looked up a second later, I wouldn't have seen it. Kenny got rushed and actually just threw a duck. But the young, the young man playing for Lyle Blackwood just totally got discombobulated, got turned around, and Snake was able to get it to Casper for that catch. You know, he just was able to, to make an incredible adjustment uh, on the ball that there's only a handful of guys in the league could make it when it counted, when you needed to make, to make it. It was a terrible thrown ball. It was a terrible route. It was just one of those things that we weren't in position to make a play. Needing only a field goal to tie, the Raiders used short yardage specialist Pete Banizak to carry the ball inside the Baltimore 10-yard line. On fourth and one from the six, Oakland had to make the decision of their season. If you go for it on fourth down and you don't get it, you lose the game. By kicking the field goal, you just buy some more playing time. He was my roommate, and he was getting kind of nervous. Uh, and I just patted him on the head and I said, "Come on, Earl, you know, shake, you know, shake it off. Let's uh, just go out there and kick the thing." I coached for 35 years, and there's two plays in my lifetime that I wish I had back, and, uh, and one of them happened in that ball game. After 60 minutes and 62 points, nothing had been settled. The first team to score would win. Now you look 
for the control offense. Just move the ball. Just try to hold on to it. Ron Lee, the lead back of the eye. Lydell Mitchell behind him. Jones turns. Fits back to Lydell. A swing to the right side. Makes the cut. And got hit by the uncharging Lester Hayes. And spun off his pass. Off his pins and down at about the 40-yard line. It'll be second down eight. Baltimore. Take away by Jones. Play action fake. Wants to throw. Fire. Sideliner. And we dropped back and everything was perfect. Uh, Raymond Chester's route was perfect. Uh, my throw was perfect, except that it was a little early and it was about two feet further than where Raymond was. You know, nobody guarded me but God in the air. And I remember the pass leaving Bird Jones' hand and I looked at it and it literally was, I don't know how far it was over my head, but it was like, wow. <laughs> I remember that feeling of frustration. I don't know that he would have scored on that play, but he would have put us in position that we would have been able to kick for the win. You know, there are a lot of things that will haunt you, and, and that one pass, I think I'll go to my grave saying, why didn't I wait? Why didn't I wait one more second and hit him? The Raiders' offense continued to move the ball on the Colts, going 41 yards in nine plays and putting themselves in position to win the game on their first drive of overtime. Waiting for the snap. Despite Mike Barnes' block, the Colts' offense remained staggered. Since taking the lead midway through the fourth quarter, they had run 17 plays for just 27 yards, while being held to just one completion and one first down. Fourth down, at about six. Waiting for the staff, it's okay. Here comes the pressure, they cover it. Lee takes the time, hangs it up. Colsey is coming up to it, it calls for a fair catch and makes it at the open 41. And you'd have to say if old man Moe was in town, that he has suddenly joined the Oakland Raiders. Stabler brings them up in the football, into the threat formation, back to throw. Plenty of time, looks around, now throws over the middle, caught by Polentikoff. Polentikoff in midfield, and hit it taken down at about the Baltimore 49-yard line. Ray Oldham made the tackle. He is just a little bit shy of first down yardage. It'll be second down for the Raiders at about a yard. Uh, ran over the man playing him, Henry Lawrence. Lawrence, Lawrence. 
That was the real backbreaker, because uh, without that 19-yard reception, uh, they probably they would have had a punt, and would have given us another possession there. First down, open. Yeah, that, that could be the, yeah, the game breaker right there. That, well, the Raiders are in possession of the Baltimore Colts 26, definitely within range for a field goal for Arrow Man, even if they fail to get closer and score a touchdown. Stabler is back to throw. Looks to set up, find a receiver, throws it over the middle, caught. Taken down inside the 20-yard line goes the receiver, Freddy Boletnikov, inside the 20 at about the 18-yard line. Baltimore just open for some kind of a break. Some kind of a break. Saber returns, gives the banner back left side. He is down to about the 15 and inside to about the 13-yard line before he's knocked down by Nelson Muncy. And the Raiders will have a first down. Well, there goes the end of the first overtime period. They let the clock run out. We'll be back with today's second overtime period in 70 seconds. I remember calling time out and going over to see John, going over and talking to John and, you know, and the fans, uh, you know, trying to get a grasp of the big picture of where you are and what's going on and 80,000 in there just rocking. I told John that uh, these people are really getting their money's worth today and he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. Where are you? In sudden death, if no one scores in the first overtime, the game moves to the second. Well, we're ready to go now to our second overtime period. Oakland is in possession of the Baltimore Colts 14-yard line. Banizak right side, pop pretty good at about the 11-yard line is Banizak. And I don't think they'll go to the field goal until they're absolutely forced to. I knew that I could kick the field goal because we're in field goal range. So if I kick the field goal or try the field goal, then I have one chance to win the game. If I throw a pass, which was a play pass, then the pass to Dave Casper in the end zone, the corner, if I throw a pass, I have a chance there, because if we complete that, then we win the game. And if we don't complete it, then I have another chance to kick the field goal. So it just made sense to me to, before I settled on the field goal, to try a shot at the end zone. I had one thing in my mind is get to the locker room. People were beating on my head and saying, good job. It's the only time we'll ever kept the ball. I've never spiked the ball in my life. I almost felt like spiking that ball because I'm mean, so happy. I caught the ball. I knew we'd won. I could go to the locker room now. But I held on to the ball, and I still have that ball. Everybody was tired. It was tiring. It was a long game. Everybody was tired. We were excited. But we had been there before. We had done that before. So it was no big celebration. We expected to win. I can remember uh, walking off the field because I have the same thoughts. Why didn't I hit him? Why didn't I make that play? Uh, you know, I guess just fate wasn't for us that day. Uh, and it was unfortunate because we fought to fight. And we worked hard. You know, maybe we just weren't good enough. One man who was good enough was Monty Johnson, who collected a career-high 20 tackles while finishing the game with a broken neck. It was a, it was a game that uh, I think will forever stand out in my memory as probably one of the, probably the best game that I ever played. And I was plumb wore out. That was a, uh, I'd really put myself 110% into that game and I was pretty wore out. You know, you have to go for the, the tie because you can't let your whole season just lay there on a, on a doggone fourth down try. We go in the locker room, and in the locker room, we're watching to see who we were going to have to play, and Denver won. 
So we started thinking right away about Denver. Against the Broncos, Oakland's reign as champions came to a close. But within three years, the Raiders would reload, and in Super Bowl 15, Oakland captured their second of what would be three world championships in a seven-year span. As for the Colts, the decline was swift and devastating. Injuries and contract disputes decimated the 78 season. Crowds began to dwindle. And in 1984, what once seemed unthinkable became real. The beloved Colts left Baltimore for Indianapolis. For the men who played it and the fans who watched it, the battle on Christmas Eve was the last great moment before everything changed. New rules regarding pass blocking would alter the way the game was played, and franchise movement would affect where it was played. The how remains constant, though, and the desire brought forth through 76 minutes of football on that day is a tribute to a game sometimes forgotten, sometimes ignored, but forever remarkable. A loving gift from the ghosts of Baltimore past. You realize you just played in a probably a special football game, an exciting football game, a game that was fun to play in. Something about a game like this, you never forget. You never forget those players, and when you see them, you talk about it. And it took a long time for me after that game to look at that football game and not believe that we should have won that game. Uh, and, and it took actually years until I sat back and, and looked at the talent they had on that football team and, and looked at the players and where they've gone and, and what Oakland Raiders were all about to kind of say, you know, we played in one tremendous football game. Yeah, we didn't win it, but we got to be pretty proud of ourselves.